All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. So um, happy Friday. Happy uh, almost the weekend. Na, or actually, say about weekend on Friday. So uh, let's start the uh, the weekend right by doing some math. So uh, tutuloy lang natin ngayon yung uh, discussion natin with module number, what is this, seven? So uh, if you recall last time, uh, nakita natin or actually simula pa lang nung Monday in your laboratory exercise, you um, you came across a very uh, sort of a counterintuitive phenomenon or anomaly in the uh, in the performance of numerical differentiation formulas. Kasi nga last time, binida natin, ah, okay, madaling mag-compute na numerical differentiation formula via Taylor's theorem, all right? Tapos hindi lang yun. Uh, kakibat ng proseso na yun, na kaya natin i-derive yung theoretical error. All right? Or basically, what's the error on paper? Assuming everything runs perfectly, ito yung, yun yung error uh, which is represented by, say, the order with respect to the step size h, no error. Right? So, halimbawa, meron tayong three-point backward formula of order h squared. We are getting a formula that uh, where the error will vanish uh, to zero as fast as how h squared vanishes to zero, right? Oh, uh, using only three uh, three points or three function values and then doing per, uh, basic arithmetical operations on them, right? Kaya lang, tinest natin yung hypothesis na yun na kapag ka, um, pinaliit natin si h, dapat liliit din yung, yung error, right? Or kasing bilis nung, nung power ni h na nandun sa order. Pero yung iba sa inyo, nag-panic nga nung lab X or ano. Kasi they are not getting what is expected because uh, everything went well for, uh, when you go 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 2, until probably 10 to the negative 5. At least yung computation ko hanggang 10 to the negative 5. Okay, uh, nagpe-perform as expected yung numerical differentiation formula. But once you get beyond 10 to the negative 5 or smaller than 10 to the negative 5, there is an underperformance. And then that's where we started our discussion this week. Tiningnan natin saan nanggaling yung uh, yung error na yun. Okay? And uh, the the cause of that anomaly is actually because we comp we uh, we did all the computations in our computers, all right? So kaya sinabi natin na apektado ng uh, masyadong maliit na step size yung computations natin. And probably we can revisit one quick example uh, uh, para i-duplicate yung ginawa natin last time with a very specific formula, okay? Now, the, the way we are improving the numerical differentiation formula is quite local in nature kasi ang kinagawa lang natin, hinahanap natin ano kaya yung mas mabilis na paraan o ano yung paraan para or uh, paano natin mapipili yung optimal step size. So we are looking for a particular value of h that will optimize or nearly optimize the numerical differentiation process. Kaya tinitingnan ko siya as a more, more of a local um, um, solution to the underperformance of the numerical differentiation formula. Kasi nga, nag-zoom in tayo sa isang nearly optimal value in h that takes into account not only the error on paper, which is the theoretical error, which is the error uh, uh, caused by the very theoretical derivation of the method, plus yung uh, error due to the machine implementation of the uh, of the uh, the method, right? So in the uh, sec uh, probably in the uh, in um, or towards the end, I need to towards the end. Uh, the the main focus of today's discussion is to find another way to improve the numerical differentiation formulas. And that is more global, all right? Na hindi lang tayo nag-zoom in sa isang particular value ni H, pero gagamit tayo ng dalawa, tatlo, and so on. The values ni H, pagsasama-samahin natin yung estimates mula dun sa mga iba't ibang value ni H to come up with a faster formula, all right? So, spoiler alert, kung yung uh, formula natin ngayon ay big O ni H square, uh, ni H to the K, and again, this is interpreted as your formula, gives you an estimate where the error vanishes as fast as how h to the k approaches zero. Titingnan natin, kaya ko bang pabilisin yung convergence ng error in such a case? 
that the uh, error will be of order little o of h to the k. Ang ibig sabihin ng uh, little o of h to the k, yung order ng error, mas mabilis naman ngayon sa pagzero ni h to the k yung pagzero ni error. Right? Ito ay as fast as, right? kapag ka big o, as fast as h to the k approaches zero, yung behavior ng error. Pero kapag ka little o of h to the k faster than the zeroing out of h to the k. So yun yung titing na natin. But before that, probably a quick review of what we did last time. Ano? Uh, tama ba? Ito yung function f na nandun sa, nandun sa homework. Ah, uh, sorry, nandun sa problem set. Parang ito yun, no? Kalimutan ko siyang ano, I mean, hindi ko ito naisap or hindi ko naalala na ito nga yung nasa laboratory exercise. So if you're doing advanced reading, then probably you you realize this one, you know. Ah, buti hindi ko yata ito in-upload or hindi ko ginawang available uh, sa canvas before the, the before the laboratory exercise. So, okay. So let's see. So itong example 7.1, tinitingnan niya yung ano, Yung total error. I mean, of course, there are some other errors involved in the process, but I guess the main two components of the error in this formula would be the theoretical error. Again, ito yung nanggaling sa derivation ng very method. And then second one is the truncation error or the error uh, incurred by the rounding offs na nangyayari doon sa computer. Okay. Sabi dito sa, uh, sa problem na to, number one, um, derive the theoretical error term for uh, the four-point backward formula, right? So kapag ka given sa yo yung four-point backward formula, tapos gusto mong derive yung theoretical error galing dito because you wanna do a uh, an error analysis. So pwede mong gawin ay kasi dito sa formula na to ginamit mo si f of x minus three h, f of x minus two h, and f of x minus h. Get the Taylor expansion, the Taylor series expansion for those uh, three points. And that's what I did here uh, precisely. And then the, the thing is, I want to get, all right, this expression, right? So, gagawin ko lang. Itong expression na to. Pero ngayon, titingnan ko yung, uh, titingnan ko yung, uh, yung theoretical error, so kailangan kunin ko yung expansion as much as needed, right? Or as many terms as needed, yung kukunin ko dun sa expansion. I'm thinking right now, is there a way that I can anticipate how many terms should I get? Uh, though dun sa problem, hindi sinabi kung ano yung ano, no? Hindi sinabi kung ano yung, uh, ano yung order ng method. So kasama siya dun sa tinetest dito sa problem na to. So basically, um, if you cannot uh, get it out, so siguro pwedeng ano, uh, trial and error muna. So, but essentially what you're going to do is, all right, meron tong si f of x minus 3h dapat nakamultiply daw ng negative 2. So, multiply everything here by negative 2. Okay. And then si uh, f of x minus h nakamultiply ng 9. So, multiply everything by 9. And then... Uh, f of x minus h is multiplied by negative 18. Then, so nakamultiply ng negative 18. Tapos mag-add ka ng 11 f of x. And then divide everything by 6h. So basically, you will look like, uh, you will uh, uh, you will uh, try to find out how this looks like. All right? At ano yung natitirang term after you do the, uh, after you do the, the algebraic manipulations. All right? And sure enough, you will get this. Kaya lang, merong matitirang ganitong term. Right? So, I just skipped the tedious um, algebraic manipulations, but that is uh, how it is done. All right? Or you can do the same, the exact same thing that you that you did to derive F prime. Pero kasi ang kagandahan ng ginawa kong approach ngayon, alam ko na yung mga coefficients eh. So, ang gagawin ko lang, titignan ko, all right, I'll just replicate this or this expression kasama yung division by 6h. And then I'll look for ano yung, uh, 
ano yung error term? Kaya kailangan ko yung as many uh, Taylor series expansion terms as possible. So I will not stop uh, with F double prime because when you compute for this one, all right, may kita mo na makakancel yung uh, F double prime. Tapos makakancel din yung F triple prime. So you need to add more expressions into your expansion. Makikita mo, ah, okay, yung fourth derivative yung hindi makakancel. All right? So you keep that in your expansion and then you will find out na, ah, tama, yung F, ah, yung fourth derivative ni F, siya yung kasama dun sa error. Okay? So if you do that, uh, pro, uh, that uh, algebraic process, you can conclude that the theoretical error is h cube over 4 times the fourth derivative of c, where c is a number from x minus 3h until x. Okay? So union theoretical error. And I guess you did this in the laboratory exercise, so I hope you got it. And then the second question is, uh, suppose that this formula is implemented in a computing device, a finite computing device in particular, and then you want to find an expression for the total error. But uh, the, the, the term total error here refers to the theoretical error, which we just derived, uh, theoretical error, plus yung truncation error, uh, yung error galing dun sa rounding off. And this is what we discussed last time. Na hindi lamang itong theoretical error ang, uh, ang nagpiplay ng role dun sa entire approximation process, right? So, copy over ko lang yan dyan. Kailangan kong tingnan, ano naman yung error na nagagaling dun sa very fact that we are plugging in these numbers or we are letting our computers to do the computations for us. And they being finite machines will cut off yung, uh, yung mga numbers to some degree because they don't uh, use all of the decimal digits that are even, hindi niya ginagamit lahat ng significant digits, meron lang siyang cut off na pag lumampas na rito yung number of significant digits, hindi ko na i-consider yung iba. Alright? So basically, the idea there is, for instance, you want f of x plus kh. Ito talaga yung nandun sa formula. So k is an integer. It could be positive or negative, what not, whatever is in your formula. Kaya lang, hindi ito yung ginagamit ni computer sa computations. Right? So limawa, f of x minus 3h, yung nandito sa formula, pero hindi kayang gamitin ni computer lahat ng significant decimal digits kay f of x minus 3h. So up to some point, itatrunkate niya yan, alright, puputulin niya yan, dun lamang sa kaya niyang i-handle na decimal digits. So f of x plus kh will be represented by a number y sub k. Pwede natin tawagin si y sub k to be our uh, uh, floating point representative for f of x plus kh. So instead of f of x plus kh, which can have an unlimited number of significant digits, puputulin niya ni computer, uh, and then that will be represented by y sub k, which will conform to the floating point numeration system in your computer, All right? And then the error incurred by that, uh, in that truncation, tawagin natin siyang e sub k. Oops. So only when we add back the truncation error, saka natin makukuha yung equality again. So nangyayari, ito lang yung ginagamit ni computer instead of this. So to find out what's the theoretical error, we need to factor in e to the k into our analysis. All right? So usually tinatawag natin to as uh, the truncation error or this is the uh, numerical artifact. O yung remnant nung, uh, nung truncation. All right? Tapos, ang problema, nag-accumulate kasi yung uh, mga artifacts na yan. So, those little truncation errors, medyo ano yan, nagpa-pile up yan. They could cancel out, that's the best case scenario, but of course, sa error analysis, hindi, hindi natin tinitingnan yung best case scenario. Sa so, error analysis, napaka-pessimistic natin. Tinitingnan natin, ano yung pinakamalaking posibleng error? Para pag pumunta, kay, kay, pag pumunta ka kay client o dun sa user nung... Uh, nung formula na dinerive mo, sabihin mo sa kanya, 
eto yung worst case scenario. So, eto yung babala ko sa yo. Hindi la ah, yung error ay posibleng ganito kalaki. You don't sell a formula by giving them the best case scenario. The best case scenario estimate for the formula. Kasi nga gusto mong makita ano at the worst yung magiging performance ng iyong uh, ng iyong numerical differentiation formula or any formula in general. Okay? Now, we did the analysis in details last time when we took in the floating point representative y sub k of our uh, of our function value and the numerical artifact e sub k. Pero ang shortcut, yung um, truncation error ay parang shadow nung, uh, nung formula itself. So yung mga f of x minus 3h, so yung mga f of k plus h ay papalitan mo lang ng e sub k dun sa total error. And that totality would be your uh, would be your uh, truncation error. So what I meant is, yung mahabang proseso na ginawa natin last time ay may shortcut. Uh, so ito yung numerical differentiation formula. Pero yun nga, ang gagawin ni computer, uh, ito papalitan niya ng y sub k. Uh, so y sub, sorry, this is uh, y sub negative 3 plus 9 y sub negative 2. Minus 18 y sub negative 1 plus 11 y sub uh, y sub 0 all over 6h. Yan yung kino compute niya. Uh, the computer does the uh, the computations on the floating point representatives. Pero nakita niyo sa exercise, nag, minsan nag zero na siya, no? Pag super liet niya, no? Pag super liet ni h, nag zero yung sagot, kaya pinagdudahan nyo. Akala nyo kayo yung may problema yung sa implementation nyo ng method. Pero nangyayari kasi, pag sobrang liit ni h, alright? So, ibig sabihin, si x minus 3h, si x minus 2h, si x minus h, at saka si x, are, very, are numbers that are very, very close to each other. They are very, very close such that their function values are seemingly equal up to the maximum number of significant digits admitted in the machine. So dahil maliit si h, magkakamuka yung x minus h hanggang kay x, so yung function values nila magkakamuka rin. So if you have a negative 2 of something, plus 9 of something, minus 18 of something, plus 11 of something, tapos yung something na yun ay magkakaparehas yung floating point representatives, so you'll have negative 2 plus 9, you'll have 7, minus 18, so that's uh, negative 11, plus 11, that's going to be 0 times whatever constant f of x or f of x minus h or this guy or this guy is. So talaga nagkakaroon ng cancellation error, nagzi-zero yung numerator. Kasi nga, nagkapare-parehas na yung floating point representatives y sub negative 3 hanggang y sub 0. Okay? Kaya makikita nyo na, ah, yun yung problema kapag ka masyadong maliit si H. Nagkakaroon ng cancellation error. Alright? Now, to quantify the truncation error and really see that this is, uh, uh, that this really affects the uh, the behavior of the formula with respect to variations in H, pwede natin compute yung truncation error by getting the shadow of this formula. Okay? Kasi nga, to get exactly this uh, this uh, expression, hindi lang ito dapat yung ino-operate natin. Hindi lamang yung mga floating point representatives. But I need to uh, do the same operations on the artifacts. All right? So kaya dun sa derivation ko ng formula, oh sorry, kulang ng negative 2 dito sa harap. All right? So sa derivation ng theoretical error, lahat lamang ng floating point representatives ay papalitan ko ng numerical artifact. Tapos yun yung truncation error. So the reason why I can do that is um, essentially what we did last time. So hindi ko na siya babalikan, pero parang gagawa lang ako ng shadow nito, yung shadow niya ay ito. Lahat ng y sub k, pinalitan ko ng e sub k. All right? And that will be the truncation error. And so essentially, ito yung ating total error. Or the error from the theoretical derivation and the error from the machine implementation. Of course, there might be other sources of error, pero I think these are the two major contributors. Or ito lang yung dalawang i-consider natin uh, dito sa course na to. Right? Of course, sabi niya, sir, may human error. Ano pa bang posibleng error? 
yeah, mukhang yun na lang yun natitira, no? Human error na lang. But essentially, hindi natin siya, ka, uh, hindi natin siya i-quantify, alright? Now, you can test your hypothesis na, ah, uh, you can test your observation from last time na, totoo nga ba na pag masyadong maliit si H, mag-blow up yung error. Nakita na natin to before, right? Nakita nyo na dun sa empirical evidence, dun sa nakuha nyo while doing the the laboratory exercise. Pero theoretically, to verify that behavior, we can look at the total error and see what happens when H approaches zero. When H approaches zero, the second term, which is our theoretical error, will approach zero as expected. All right? So ito ay magzi-zero. Pero kapag kasi H ay nag-approach ng zero, yung denominator ng theoretical error will be close to zero. All right? And then when no cancellation occurs in the numerator, ibig sabihin ito ay magiging non-zero constant divided by something close to zero, that will be a very large number. So the, theor the theoretical error blows up while the, uh, sorry, the truncation error blows up while the uh, theoretical error approaches zero. So essentially, pag superlet ni H, expect dapat natin na mag-blow up yung total error. Okay? Now, the remedy that we developed last time is to find what's that optimal H. Kailan yung H na ma-achieve ko yung perfect balance between the truncation error and the theoretical error. So uh, I think of it as what's the what's the threshold for H? I know that but si H para hindi mo na, hindi pa ako magsasuffer doon sa um, underperformance due to the machine implementation. Well, all you need to do is to find an upper bound for the absolute value of uh, the total error. Okay? So kunin mo lang yung absolute value niyan, tapos kunin mag-apply ka lang ng triangle inequality uh, several times, all right? So, ibig sabihin, ito, uh, magiging, uh, mo, i-ensure mo lang na positive siya. So, h cube over 4 times the function here is said to be, yeah, um, function f ay sine x. So, we compute the fourth derivative of sine x. That's negative cosine x. Tapos, lagi tayong pessimistic. So, itong constant na to, uh, the fourth derivative evaluated at C. So, siya dapat ay si negative cosine X. Si evaluate ko sa isang number na naninirahan sa interval X minus 3H comma X. Though, I don't, uh, we cannot get the value of C, whatever uh, analysis we do, right? Wala tayong access kay C. So, papalitan ko na lang si C by the maximizer ng absolute value ng fourth derivative para makuha ko ano yung worst case scenario. Uh, ano yung pinakamalaking posibleng maging error. So, i-maximize ko ngayon yung fourth derivative or yung absolute value ng fourth derivative sa interval x minus 3h or x. Or, hindi nyo nga siya kailangang i-maximize dun sa interval na yun. You can be more pessimistic and say, ano yung pinakamalaking posibleng value ni negative cosine x. Alright? And obviously, the maximum value of this is 1, so, kaya dito makikita nyo sa susunod na line, x cube over, uh, h cube over 4 na lang yung consider ko. Right? Of course, you can replace 1 by a tighter upper bound. Pwedeng mas maliit na upper bound yung gamitin nyo. Mag-rely kayo dun sa x minus 3h comma x. Kaya lang ang problema ro, hindi pa nga natin alam beforehand kung ano, kung ano yung value ni h. So, we don't exactly know how this interval looks like. So, it is usually a nice bet to um to globally minimize or sorry to globally maximize uh the derivative in the error term okay so kinuha ko na yung global maximum o yung absolute maximum ng fourth derivative yun yung ipinalit ko dito sa f uh fourth derivative of f evaluated at c okay tapos paano ko to nakuha yung 40e dito sa Dito sa, uh, for the theoretical error, upper bound for the absolute value of the, sorry, truncation error. Kunin ko lang yung absolute value nito. Tapos, uh, properties ng absolute value, absolute value ng taas over absolute value ng baba. Alright. Then, I'll apply triangle inequality here. So, pwede ako magkaroon ng uh, upper bound nito ay 2E plus upper bound nito ay 9E. 
Tapos instead of negative 18, dahil nagka-triangle inequality ako, plus, it, uh, plus positive 18 uh, E plus 11 E. So I'll have 11 plus 18, 29, 38, 40. 40 E over 6, 6 H, right? So repetitive, ano lang dito? Uh, triangle inequality. Kasi i-assume natin yung worst case na walang nagka-cancel out doon sa mga theoretical errors na nag add up lang silang lahat. Of course, you might be lucky that this will uh, this will cancel some of these things will cancel each other out. That's fine, but we are up uh, we are after the worst case scenario here. Okay? So ito na yung makukuha mo and essentially when you simplify things, you're going to get this expression. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, by the way, uh, inisip ko saan galing, nang galing, uh, saan nang galing yung 10 to the negative 5. Galing pala yung dito sa problem. Tinabi dun sa problem na yung machine epsilon ay less than or equal to 10 to the negative 5. All right? Kinuha natin yung maximum dun sa mga artifacts. The assumption here is medyo low-tech yung ginagamit ko na computing device. It could be a sari-sari uh, store calculator ng truncation error lamang ay ah, yung machine epsilon lamang ay 10 to the negative 5. Meaning, if the difference between two numbers is less than 10 to the negative 5, then they are considered to be virtually equal in the computer because ang sinisave lang ni computer ay hanggang dun sa fifth decimal digit after the decimal point. Okay? So, kaya nagkaroon dito ng 10 to the negative 5 and then this would be our upper bound for the um, for the total error. Tapos pag gusto kong makita ano yung optimal step size, gamitin nyo lang yung Math36 tools nyo para i-minimize itong expression ito. So get the minimizer of this guy. And then you will get the optimal step size. The optimal step size is the fourth derivative of 4 over 45,000, which is approximately this guy. So itong number na to, itong 0 0.097098, yan yung near optimal step size that factors in yung theoretical error at saka yung um, truncation error. So kung gagamit kayo na, uh, kung gagamitin nyo yung, comp yung computing device na nandito sa example, siguraduhin nyo na hindi lalampas ng 0 0.097098 yung inyong value ni H. Because after that, magde-deteriorate na yung process. So, ito yung peak ng accuracy ng ating estimate. Okay? Any questions with that? Okay. So, if turn on, tingnan natin ngayon yung isa pang method, which is a more global, um, a global remedy to this problem. It is global kasi hindi lang tayo ngayon titingin ng isang optimal step size. Ang gagawin ko ngayon, mag-perform ko yung numerical differentiation formula using different HS. And then I will combine the estimates from two different increments to get a better approximate. Right? So ngayon, meron na yung sequence of approximates of a certain uh, of a certain order, right? So pwede ko halimbawa, pwede kong i-implement itong method na to with different values of h like what you did in the laboratory exercise. And you can notice that up to some point, all right, kasing bilis ni h square, uh, ni h cube, nagzi-zero yung error. Kasi order 3 itong uh, approximation formula na to. Pero ngayon, ang gagawin ko, gusto kong mas pabilisin. So I want to derive a numerical differentiation formula of order little o of h cube. Mula dito sa formula na to. So I want to get a sequence of approximate that approaches the exact value of f prime faster than how h cube approaches zero. So yung mga yung dineride natin uh, so far ay mga formulas na kasing bilis ng order nila nag approach ng zero. Ngayon, gusto makakuha ng formula na mas mabilis. All right? And what we'll do is to combine two estimates using the formula via some basic arithmetical operations, and then we'll get a sequence of new approximates that will converge faster than the original sequence, right? 
yun yung proseso na tinatawag natin na Richardson extrapolation. Okay? But before that, we, we will... Uh, let's uh, take a look at big O and little O in uh, alternative manners, right? Sinabi natin na... Uh, all right. Si G of H, I order big O in H to the K if, in the long run, nagiging asymptotic upper bound ni G si ang isang constant multiple ni H to the K. So I hope you remember this formula. This is what you discussed supposedly in AMAT 152, right? Yan yung definition ng big O ni H to the K. There exists a constant C and uh, a number H such that for all H's greater than, oh, sorry, there exists a constant C and a number H sub zero, such that after H sub zero, G of H is bounded above by the constant multiple C of H to the K. Or, uh, yeah, or something like that. Okay, so yan yung definition ng big O. Well, an equivalent uh, definition to that Kasi nga ang interpretation natin kapag ka big O of H to the K ang formula, magkasing bilis yung behavior ng ating function G at saka ni H to the K. So if you take the limit of G of H over H to the K, as H approaches zero, this must be a constant number. All right? So it is uh, bounded above by some positive constant. It is not zero. Dapat ilagay ko yan dyan shy non-zero at bounded by a constant. So the ratio between G of H and H to the K will eventually go to a number C or a constant number or a positive constant as H approaches zero. Uh, H approaches zero to kasi infinitesimal asymptotics yung ginagamit natin. So yun yung interpretation. Big O siya ni H to the K kapag ka yung limit ng G over H to the K equals a positive constant. Okay, now we are not looking for uh, a formula of order big O kasi yun na yung ginawa natin last time. Gusto kong pabilisin. Gusto kong makakuha ng isang formula of order little o of h to the k. Kailan mangyayari yun? Kapag ka mas mabilis mag zero si h to the k kesa kay g of h. And to quantify this using limits, ito yung gusto nating ma-achieve. Gusto ko yung limit ng error term in this case, G of H yung ginamit ko para sa kanya, divided by H to the K, dapat ay maging equal kay zero as H approaches zero. All right? So yung pinakaiba nila. Kapag ka big O yung, uh, pagka si G ay big O ni H to the K, yung limit na to equal sa positive number. Pero kapag ka yung limit nito ay equal kay zero, then that's uh, when we say G of H is a little O of H to the K. And what's the interpretation? If you have a derivative formula na D of H, so si D yung actual derivative, tapos si D of H, ito yung estimate galing sa isang numerical differentiation formula implemented with step size H, right? Pag ang formula natin, merong error term ng order ay big O in H to the K, D of H approaches D, or your estimates approaches the exact value, as fast as how h to the k approaches zero. Meanwhile, and this is our goal for today, derive a numerical differentiation formula d of h that depends on the increment and uses some function values. But this time we want to order uh, the error to be of order little o of h to the k. This means that the estimates we have for the derivative uh, converges to d with respect to the increment h faster than how h to the k approaches zero. So tingnan yung uh, change in the adjectives here. From as fast as, papunta tayo sa faster. Okay. So paano natin to gagawin? Well, the general idea is dahil magsisimula tayo sa isang formula of order big O, right? So ito yung makikita natin. Titingnan natin yung limit ng error over the uh, the power of h inside the order ay maging non-zero constant or magiging positive constant kasi nga yung mga derive yung mga na derive nating formulas kanina ay big o so ibig sabihin pag kinuha mo tong uh, yung limit ng ratio na yan magiging positive constant ang goal natin ay i-force yung issue 
na yung limit ng error divided by the uh, the function inside the big O ay maging equal kay zero. So we will need, we will uh, we will treat the error term so that the limit of the error term divided by h to the k ay maging equal k zero instead of a positive constant. Because once that limit becomes zero, our formula becomes of order little o of h to the k. And let's see how we can force this issue. Okay. So illustrate natin siya using this uh, three-point centered formula of order two. Right. So all you need to, to do here is to take note of the theoretical error. So ngayon, ito I see capital D, ito yung exact derivative. So ito yung exact derivative. Then this guy is our D of H. Kasi ito yung estimate natin para kay F prime using step size H. So in this case, our D of H is F of X plus H minus f of x minus h all over 2h. Forget about the truncation error muna, all right? So theoretical error lang yung i, uh, i, um, i ko consider natin dito, all right? So to verify that this is a formula of order big of h squared, let's get the, the, ratio, uh, the ratio or the limit of the ratio of the error divided by h squared. So kunin mo si d, the exact derivative, minus your estimate. As yung sagot, i-divide natin by the supposed order. The supposed order is uh, h squared. So kaya meron akong h squared sa denominator. All right? Tapos ito yung absolute error. Now, remember, d is f prime of x, the exact f prime of x. d of h is our derivative formula. So essentially, itong numerator, pag gusto ko siyang i-simplify, I will just have this minus this guy. All right. So essentially, ito, kailangan ko lang i-transpose doon to get d minus d of h. So essentially, the answer would be negative, or in this, this numerator, will be negative h squared f triple prime of c all over 6. All right. Tapos, i divide ko siya by h squared. Meron siyang h, h squared dun sa denominator. So magka-cancel yung h squared. Matitira lamang ay negative 1 over 6 times f triple prime of c. Okay? Tapos remember, f triple prime of c is just a constant, right? So ito ay constant. Uh, ano yung alam natin kay c? Si c ay isang number between x minus h and x plus h. But here, h approaches 0. So that means x minus h and x plus h both approach x. So si c, nasa sandwich siya ng dalawang numbers na super lapit kay x. So as h approaches 0, si c ay mag approach ng zero, na mag approach ng x. Right? Kasi si c, nasa sandwich siya ni x minus h sa ni x plus h. When you take the limit as h approaches 0, this guy and this guy will approach x. So by the, by the squeeze theorem, all right? C will approach zero as H approaches zero. Yun yung conclusion ko rito. So yung C rito, pwede kong palitan ng X. Okay? And essentially, this is a constant. 1 over 6 times the third derivative of F evaluated at the number X at which you want to estimate the derivative at. Okay? And this confirms what you already know, that this formula is of order big O of H squared. The error will vanish as fast as how h squared approaches zero. Our goal now is to accelerate the formula via Richardson extrapolation. We want to make the error vanish faster than how h squared approaches zero. Paano ko siya gagawin? Gusto ko maging little o yung order ng error. So gusto ko itong limit na to maging equal kay zero. Yung limit ng theoretical error divided by h squared dapat ay maging equal kay 0 instead of a positive number 1 sixth f triple prime of x. Now, how do I do that? Kailangan ay mag-work ako backwards. I-reverse engineer ko. Gusto ko yung error over h squared mag-approach ng 0 as h approaches 0. So, I will tweak the error. Okay? I'll force the issue that this will be equal to 0. How can I do that? Well, if you'll just Subtract these two guys, 
alam natin yung magiging difference. So, etong D minus DH, pagka pinerform mo yung subtraction, thanks to our knowledge of the theoretical error, D minus DH is exactly negative H squared over 6 F triple prime of C. All right? Galing yan dito sa theoretical error. Na sinulat ko rin pala dito. All right. So alam natin, ito will give us negative h squared over 6f triple prime. Pero ang goal ko nga, gusto ko yung numerator, which represents the uh, theoretical error, divided by h squared will have limit equal to 0 as h approaches 0. So instead ng error ay d minus dh, gusto kong gumawa ng bagong formula ng error ay d minus d of h plus h squared f triple prime of x. Kasi alam ko in the long run, yung limit na to ay magiging equal dito. So medyo i-reverse engineer ko siya. Dadayain ko siya. Gusto ko kasi yung numerator mag zero. So kukunin ko tong sagot na to. Imumultiply ko by h squared kasi merong divisor na h squared dyan. Alright? Imumultiply ko to ng h squared tapos minus ko to dun sa numerator. Alright? Nakita niyo yung pandaraya. Ano? So... I-add ko to, or isusubtract ko to actually. Dapat ito ay may negative pa. Isusubtract ko siya dun sa d minus dh. So d minus dh minus whatever the answer in this limit is, which is basically our theoretical error. So d minus dh minus the theoretical error will give us d minus dh plus h squared over 6 f triple prime of x over h squared. And I know now that if this is what, uh, if this is, the theoretical error, if I can find a formula kung saan yung theoretical error ay equal sa d minus d of h plus h squared over 6 times f triple prime of x, I know that the limit will be equal to 0. So nag-reverse engineering ako ngayon. Okay? Now, you can verify the, the steps that you did. d minus d of h will be uh, 1 6 h squared times f triple prime of c. Tapos meron kang plus h squared over 6, f triple prime of x. Medyo napagbaligtad ko to, pero nasa loob naman siya ng absolute value, so okay lang. Then divided by h squared, so mawawala yung h squared dito sa numerator, so we'll be left with this guy. Pero remember that as, uh, as h approaches 0, c will approach x. So essentially, this guy will be f triple prime of x minus f triple prime of x. That will vanish. So equal kay zero yung limit. So what the, uh, what this uh, this analysis tells us is, if we can derive a formula, na ang theoretical error ay equal dito, then that formula is of order little o of h squared. Mas mas mabilis na ngayon magzero yung error kaysa sa pagzero ni h squared, and hence our formula is accelerated. Okay, so essentially, ang ginawa lang naman natin ay gusto ko sort of eto yung maging uh, differentiation formula ko. But of course, you cannot use this right away because we don't have access to f triple prime of x. So paano ko siya hanapin? Well, I'll just do a little algebra here. But first, I'm going to conclude that, uh, yeah, uh, si formula na d of h plus constant k1 times h squared ay isang formula of order h squared, a little o of h squared. So basically, remember, ito yung gusto kong maging theoretical error. So that means kung ito yung theoretical error, ang gusto ko nga yung formula para dun sa aking derivative ay equal kay d of h plus h squared f triple prime of x over 6 then this is a formula of order little o of h squared. Kaya lang, hindi ko to pwedeng gawing numerical differentiation formula. Bakit? Kasi hindi ko nga alam kung ano yung value ni f triple prime of x over 6. So I'll just replace this by a constant, say, k1. And our goal now is to find k1. Because if I can find k1, then I will get the formula of order little o of h squared. And that's my goal here. Ito yung ansatz para dun sa formula, kailangan hanapin ko ano yung constant k1. 
But theoretically, we know that the constant K1 is equal to negative one sixth F triple prime of X, but we cannot use that information. We need to find an alternative way or an alternative, uh, yeah, an alternative way to quantify this guy. All right. Kasi nga, hindi pwede yung direct formula na si K1 ay equal kay negative one sixth F triple prime of X. Kasi nga, hindi natin alam ano si F triple prime of X. Hindi natin siya alam kasi hindi nga natin alam yung first derivative f prime of x. What more the third derivative? Okay? So ngayon, medyo magmamagic ako. Alright? Nadayaan kito. I'll force the issue that uh, I can get my hands on the value of k1h squared. And this is where the extrapolation will take, take place. Meaning gagamit ako ng isang uh, estimate para dun sa derivative which is completely out of the picture originally. Kasi nga, ang plano natin dito, numerical differentiation formula of, um, of step size h, ngayon mag-extrapolate ako. Gagamit ako ng isang estimate na nakuha ko by using a different step size. Yun yung extrapolation na nagaganap. Okay? And again, all of this is done so that we can get what the value of k1h squared is. Ano yung kailangan nating idagdag dun sa ating numerical differentiation formula para makakuha ng formula of order big O of h squared. Okay? Now, I'll just copy over what we have so far. Tapos ang gagawin ko, extrapolation procedure. What I'll do is to replace h by h over 2. So, ibig sabihin, aside from applying our numerical derivative formula, numerical differentiation formula with step size h, titingnan ko ano yung mangyayari kapag ka-implement ko siya, say, kinalahati ko yung step size. I will replace h by h over 2. Okay. Uh, it's an arbitrary choice for me to replace h by h over 2. You could have replaced h by h over 10, h over 17, h over 5, or whatever uh, multiple of h you like. Pero ang ginamit ko lang dito, pinalitan ko lang si h ng h over 2. So essentially, aside from estimating h using the basic formula, na derive uh, using Taylor's theorem with increment h, I estimate ko siya using increment h over 2. So, implement yung formula nyo with step size h over 2. Tapos yung h squared, mapapalitan ng h over 2 quantity squared. That's how I got h squared over 4 here. Tapos eto h squared, mapapalitan ng h over 2. So, this would have been little o ng h squared over 4. Pero yung mga constant multipliers na nawawala siya sa backman landau equations. So yung 4, ignore mo lang kasi naka little o naman siya. Okay? And then we got two expressions here. What I'll do is to subtract the corresponding sides of the second equation from the first. D minus D, that's 0. D of H minus this guy will give us this. Then K1H squared minus K1H squared over 4. That will give us... 3 quarters of K1H squared, tapos little o plus little o, little o pa rin ni H squared. Okay, so inubtra ko lang yung both sides. And then here, I can compute for K1H squared. Remember, kailangan ko lang makuha si K1H squared. Kasi pag nalaman ko na si K1H squared, alam ko na yung bagong formula na gagamitin ko. Okay? So, solve, solve ko lang si K1H squared mula dito sa formula na to. I'll get K1H squared equals 4 thirds D of H minus uh, D of H over 2 minus D of H. Tapos ipa-plug in ko lang itong value ni K1H squared dito sa formula para kay D. Okay. So essentially, our new derivative formula is this guy. Ito yung resulta when you do D of H plus K1H squared, but K1H squared is replaced by this guy. Pag sinimplify nyo, magiging D equals, eto yon, eto yung D of H uh, plus K1H squared. Na compute na natin si K1H squared, sinimplify ko. Eto na yung bagong derivative formula. And this derivative formula is of order little o of H squared. Now, how do you implement this? So, meron ka muna ng D of H na gagamitin, which is the formula that you derive from the Taylor series expansion. Halimbawa, ito yun. Ito yung gagamitin yun na D of H. 
Okay. Now, start kasi step size 0 0.1. So, implement mo si D of H when H is 0 0.1. So, compute mo to, yun yung pupunta rito. Tapos, mag-extrapolate ka ngayon. I-implement mo pa yung numerical differentiation formula na na-derive mo using step size H over 2. Tapos, yun yung magiging D of H over 2 mo. And then, you do this basic arithmetical operation four times the estimate with step size over uh, h over two minus your estimate using step size h all over three. That will be your new estimate for d. And that estimate will have order little o of h squared. Ibig sabihin yung sequence of estimates that you're going to get from, from this uh, extrapolated formula ay mas mabilis magzero yung error kaysa sa pagzero ni h squared. Okay? And that's how Richardson extrapolation happens. Of course, if you have a different formula, then you will have a different Richardson extrapolated formula. So itong formula na to ay specific lamang para dito. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo, nakadepende dun sa theoretical error yung pagdederive kay k1. All right. So kung iba na yung formula nyo, may iba na yung Richardson extrapolation formula or extrapolated formula dito sa baba. And the nice thing is that this Richardson extrapolation process that we have just laid down also applies to any iterative formula. All right? Hindi lang siya sa numerical differentiation formula. Pwede niyo pa siyang gamitin para sa ibang extrapolation na uh, 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 para sa iba pang iterative uh, numerical approximation formulas, mapa roots of uh, finding roots of polynomial equations man yan, finding solutions to system of equations, basta iterative yung formula of order big O of H, uh, big o of H squared, pwede nyo nyo tong gamitin. Uh, by the way, yun pala, hindi pala to limited dito lang. Pwede nyo, uh, hindi siya limited para sa formula na to. Mag-work siya sa kahit na anong formula ng order ay big O of H squared. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo, wala na namang, aside from this, Aside from here, hindi na nag-play ng role yung theoretical error, yung exact on theoretical error. Ang pinaglaruan lang talaga natin dito ay yung order ng theoretical error. So kapag ka meron kang formula of order big O of h squared, right? So hindi hindi natin kino-consider yung mga constant multipliers. Pag meron kang formula of order big O of h squared, i-implement mo lang siya to get d of h. And then Implement it another time, but this time take half of your step size and then combine those two estimates using this formula. Then that will give you an estimate of order big O of H squared. All right. At hindi siya nag work lang sa derivative formulas. So kahit na nung iterative technique na may encounter natin sa Math 175, pwede nyo tong gamitin Richardson extrapolation as long as that formula is known to be of order big O of H squared. Okay, now I don't have time, but in the laboratory class on Monday, I will ask our lab instructors to uh, to walk you through uh, example 7.2 para lang makita nyo yung, uh, yung, yung proseso, okay? And then uh, you will implement this, tapos si analyze nyo na mas mabilis nag- uh, Naga approach sa true solution yung Richardson extrapolated formula. Because in this example, in evaluate, uh, in approximate kung derivative, which is exactly equal to one. All right. So exactly equal k one, pero makita nyo yung three point centered formula kapag kang h i equal dito. All right. Eto palang yung value na nakukuha niya. Pero kapag ka ginamit kung Richardson extrapolated formula, eto na yung makukuha ko, which is much closer to one than this guy. All right. So yeah, don't worry. I did discuss some lab instructors nyo at 7.2. And then what you'll do in the lab, probably I'll upload the laboratory exercise bukas na lang or in the wee hours of uh, uh, mamaya. All right. But make uh, but uh, for sure the lab expert will be available in Canvas tomorrow by 12 noon. All right. Ang gagawin nyo ay magdi-derive kayo ng... Uh, Richardson extrapolated formula 
for uh, for a big of H cube formula, siguro yung ano na rin, yung ginawa nyo lab, uh, last laboratory exercise. So, balikan nyo yung formula na yun, order big of H cube siya, kailangan nyo i-derive yung Richardson formula para maging little o of H cube na yung kanyang order. Tapos i-implement nyo lang siya, gagawa kayo ng table katulad ng nasa figure 7.1, to really illustrate that the formula that we got converges faster than the uh, original formula. Okay, so, and that's it. We're done with module number seven. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Concerns? I hope everything's okay. Uh, you Historically, Yung mga students ay nagsisimula ng bumawi dito sa numerical differentiation. Kasi sa chapter 1, siguro may culture shock pa with 174. Ano. At uh, admittedly, theoretically, mas heavy yung, yung chapter 1, uh, numeric uh, polynomial interpolation. Kaya mas may hirap yung mga laboratory exercises. Pero mas dumadali na to when we go to numerical differentiation. And I think next module nasa numerical integration na tayo. So, mga pambawi nyo na to. Time nyo na para bumawi dun sa mga laboratory exercises. So, I hope you are uh, you are feeling better with the lab exercises now. Kasi hindi na siya ganun ka-theoretical. At saka hindi na siya heavy. Kasi instead of doing this in MATLAB, ang dali niyang gawin sa Excel. Kaya kung makikita nyo itong result na to, galing to sa Excel. Kasi hindi na ako nagpabibo na, or nagpabida-bida na mag-program pa sa MATLAB. Eh, ang dali naman itong gamitin sa Excel. Drag lang ng formula, kayang-kaya to sa Excel. So probably that's one thing that you can uh, you can try. All right? Kung hindi kayo komportable pa rin kay MATLAB, sige, try nyo to sa Excel. You should get nice answers pa rin naman. Okay? So uh, that's it uh, for me today. Uh, no questions? All right, so, uh, oh, before, uh, parting word, uh, guys, please be patient with the uh, problem set. I'll try my best to, uh, to, to give it back to you, uh, by next week, by Friday next week. Though, ang nasa canvas ko ay 300 plus pa checkables, you know. So, uh, please be patient, you know. So, I hope to give it back to you, uh, by Friday next week. All right. And that's it. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Enjoy the weekend and let's see each other again so Wednesday naman. Okay? Bye guys. Thank you po sir. Yes, sir. All right, you're welcome. Thank you po sir.